everyone, and welcome to our next panel. I'm David Murray, and I'm here with Ellen Wong and Fatima Alavizadeh uh, from Calm and Notion, respectively. And hopefully Cosman will be joining us soon. If, if he does, he'll magically appear on stage. Uh, our topic today is product engineers, when and how to hire them. So product engineers or product engineer, the concept of a product engineer, it's funny because when we started to, to prep for this call, we were kind of talking about like, you know, do, do you have any product engineer like wrecks out? Like, do you, are you hiring for that particular role, right? And the answer to that question may be no, but you still might want them and you still might to want to even be hiring for them. So we'll, we'll talk about that. But first to get it started, I'd love if uh, Ellen and Fatima, if you want to introduce yourselves. Ellen, feel free to go first. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Ellen, uh, VP of Engineering at Calm. Um, so at Calm, I manage definitely product engineers that works for our B2B business unit. Um, I also manage like engineers that work on platform stuff like data engineering, uh, QA, as well as product infrastructure. So definitely very different kinds of personalities and skill set we look for in those teams. Hello, everyone. I'm Fatima Alavizadeh, and I lead the core product engineering group at Notion. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Notion, uh, Notion is an all-in-one place where you can manage work and life. Uh, you can keep track of your notes, your docs, your projects, your uh, to-dos, and it allows you to customize it however you like. Uh, I've been at Notion for about a year. Uh, before that, I've spent years uh, at companies such as Airtable, Airbnb, Meta, and Microsoft. And for almost all of my uh, career, I've been on product teams. Uh, very excited to be here today and talk about this topic with you all. Awesome. Well, I know that we probably have many folks listening who are both users of both of your, your, your team's respective products. So, so really excited to have you both here. So let's dive in with that, that first question of what is uh, a product engineer? You know, so uh, obviously that the concepts could mean a hundred different things. So, uh, you know, feel free either of you to start. And I see uh, Cosman actually will be joining us uh, momentarily. Yeah, I can I can start uh, and talk about that a little bit. Uh, in, in my mind, product engineering is really a persona, uh, a full stack, sometimes front end and sometimes even back end engineers. Uh, if you think about why, what, and how of product development, uh, different personas want to get involved with different stages to different degrees. Uh, product engineers uh, like to actually get involved in earlier stages, and they have the skills to do that. Um, so when, when you think about it, these are engineers who can develop deep understanding of uh, customers, their use cases, their pain points, uh, and uh, basically they can actually evaluate solutions to see how effective are these solutions in addressing those pain points. The other important thing I think is that these engineers can decouple uh, product uh, solutions from technical solutions. Uh, there's obviously a time and place for evaluating technical solutions, solutions, but they can decouple them uh, and uh, put on whatever hat is needed at the time. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, Ellen, anything to add, feel free. And yeah, um, big plus one on that. I think it's funny when we were starting to talk about this topic, um, We, I don't think I've ever had a rack called product engineering, right? So in, in like smaller startup that I've worked at before, a lot of times we hire full stack for the flexibility. Um, and then like, you know, fast forward to now, we, we do hire like more front end, back end focused engineers. But then inherently, as we are hiring for those engineers, what we're looking for is like slightly different things. So for product engineers, a lot of times we, we, we kind of ask where what motivates them. Is it the cu customer empathy? Is it the business sense? Is it the impact that it can bring to the business? Um, whereas like, you know, for, for more internal teams, a lot of times we may actually look for like, you know, are they, you know, can really go deep into a technical solution, looking for sustainable sustainability in something that's more complex. So I think like taking a step back when it was a smaller shop, we kind of don't have that luxury of somebody who is not curious about our customer pain points or doesn't care about like the business per se. They absolutely have to, right? And so like we just kind of default to all engineers we hire our product engineers we're going to be iterating and, and getting like market feedback um, instead of just building for months and so yeah that's i think when i think about product engineers um not necessarily like all in like the job description itself but you know as the company evolves like definitely hiring product engineers uh could, could use that extra thought 
Awesome. And Kaz, yeah, feel free to introduce yourself. And then uh, the, the first question we're asking is, what is a product engineer? So everybody's yeah. relevant perspective in that regard, uh, feel free to share yours as well. Great. Hi, everyone. Apologies for, for being late. Um, uh, my name's Kaz. Uh, I'm the CTO at Brex. I've uh, been here for uh, almost four years. Uh, and then before that, I was at Stripe for about four and a half years. Uh, and then before that, Microsoft. Um, it's very interesting because I was actually chatting with someone about this recently about like the engineering culture on product teams um, and how it's evolved at Brex. Um, completely agree with Alan. Like in the beginning, when you have when you're just starting, like you want everybody to care, and you don't really have you don't have PMs, you don't have like there's none of these roles. You just everybody's kind of building and have to have that sense of curiosity and like drive. Uh, and then over time, people get more specialized, uh, and then I see how um, uh, different people kind of like veer more towards the customer, further away from the customer, the definition of customer can change. You have like internal, external, the developers, abstractions, and so on. Um, the one thing that uh, just to not um, uh, repeat uh, all the other great stuff is the, the one of the things I've noticed with product engineers is not only do they express and have strong opinions on the product um, and like they collaborate and they push like their PM counterparts or, or their designers or anybody like that versus just like, give it to me and I will build it. Um, but they also really care about like how it lands. And I've noticed that where um, the people who I put in the bucket of like really thoughtful product engineers, they will build things. And then afterwards they start, they, they look at the rollout, they look at the usage, they start making more tweaks. Uh, they generally kind of like nurture that uh, over, over a longer period of time uh, versus the I've built this, I've shipped it. It doesn't have any bugs. And, and I kind of move on to, uh, to the next thing. So it's it's interesting to hear these commonalities, and we even you know seeing a, a, a comment in the the public chat of missing the context, you know, pro- product engineering versus what infrastructure engineer or something else. It's it's true that um, this concept of a product engineer is one that like may not even exist at many organizations it's still being socialized, and it's one that um, you know you might actually have, especially if you're at a at a startup, you know, uh, a team of all product engineers and not realize it because you have that team of folks that are aware of all of the things that each of you mentioned. So um, good to call out. And again, if, if uh, you know, anybody listening is like, I like, what is this product engineer thing? Again, it's, it could be a full stack engineer. It could be a front end engineer. It could be a back end engineer, but it's somebody who has that, that product bent. So um, would love now that we're kind of defining what it is, uh, what a product engineer is. Um, the question is, how do you hire a, a product engineer? So feel free, you know, in, in any order, if you have any thoughts or approaches of, how you would approach hiring a product engineer specifically, you know, again, different from, shall we say, a non-product engineer. So anyone's welcome to go first. Uh, I can uh, go ahead. Go for it. No, go for it. Go for it. Uh, cool. So this is a great question, David, uh, one that I'm thinking about a lot. Uh, currently, I'm thinking basically this is not uh, very, uh, very different from hiring for any specific skill on your team, right? So you're looking for product intuition as a skill. And I think for hiring a skill and developing a skill you're in your team, there are really three dimensions. Uh, you need to advertise it, you need to screen for it, and then you need to make sure that you're growing it internally. Uh, advertising it is really making sure the job description is accurately describing what is expected of these engineers, uh, that you actually want them. Uh, to be involved in earlier stages, think about the product, about the users, uh, which can result in actually self-selecting into those roles. And you will get more of these engineers top of the funnel. The next step is the screening for it. Uh, so like anything else, your interview process should actually good, give you a good signal uh, on this, which means you either add a new interview, uh, which is cross-functional with designers or product managers, or you tweak one of your existing interviews. Uh, to give you an example, uh, it's actually considered a good signal if uh, engineers ask about uh, product requirements or product edge cases uh, in design interviews or in coding interviews, but usually we give them the, uh, the answer. So instead of giving them the answer, we can have a conversation about, so what do you think? What are the trade-offs? Uh, how would you actually improve this product experience, this user experience? And then finally, uh, after hiring these engineers, you need to grow them. That's the way to retain them, and that's the way to actually, if you can't hire, uh, have that expertise internally. Uh, so it's really important to make sure that 
uh, your career ladder uh, allows for product engineer to grow leveraging their skills uh, and their strengths, which is really uh, growing by dealing with more and more product complexity and ambiguity. Anything, Ellen or Kazi? Yeah, like yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I think if I think about some of the more unique traits uh, for product engineers, um, they tend to um, uh, have more emphasis on collaboration across different functions uh, because you're, the people that you work with and stakeholders uh, tend to be like folks not just like in engineering or product or design, um, but also uh, in like marketing uh, potentially, or depending on what you build, it could be something with like legal and compliance, go to market. Um, and so in general, like that's, uh, that's something that I've seen uh, pretty useful and, and we, uh, we track for that. Um, the second thing, which is less about hiring, but more about growth um, is with infrastructure, what I've noticed is because the challenges, um, the technical challenges tend to get more complex over with scale, you end up having people in IC roles much more often and for longer periods of time, which is why typically you end up seeing infrastructure orgs be more uh, senior heavy, like staff engineers and so on. Uh, whereas on the product side, a lot of the complexity grows around like the polish and like interconnecting different features. Um, but over time, I've, uh, the, a lot of conversations I have with product engineers like, okay, I built this feature and this feature and this feature. And sure, this is more complex, et cetera, but like, what's next? Because it starts being more repetitive. Um, and um, I've noticed that you tend to have people wanting to move into management um, more um, uh, early than uh, on other parts of kind of like types of engineers. And I think that's because they, they start feeling that they're kind of like not learning as much. Um, and, and one kind of a different challenge. Yeah, um, I think the thing that I would add to that is it also depends on the company's situation. When you have headcount in like both product engineering orgs and, you know, more internal teams, infrastructure org, then then it's almost like about placement and kind of the sell call process. So a lot of times I would work with my recruiting partner to kind of like get them to kind of give us a signal to gauge, hey, is this person more driven and excited by deep technical complexity, um, you know, like or like. Um, or are they more excited about making business impact or driving customer delight? So that's like the very first signal about like how we may go about placing those candidates. Um, and then as the, 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 the loop evolves, um, the loop generally would be the same. If we think that the person is likely going to be in product engineering, then we would put more emphasis on like the partnerships with like perhaps customer facing teams. Uh, product management, um, and, and even like, do they even have experience talking to customers? Um, cause that's, that's a skill on its own, right? So like, that's, that's one aspect we would look at. Um, whereas like for internal teams, then we would put, you know, also partners for, for those engineers to see if they, they can be a good partner, but maybe their partners are other engineering teams, internal teams. Um, and so it's a slightly different test that we would put them through and evaluate their skills there. Um, and then also big plus one on both of you on talking about how do you retain, um, you know, if you find someone who is very curious about customer journey, um, very curious about business impact, do you have the roadmap and product strategy that would actually continue to, to power that curiosity, right? Like if your roadmap isn't changing a lot, you're kind of hiring someone that, you know, may not stick around very long because they get bored so quickly. So I think those are all the, the things that we take into account when hiring. So you've each uh, shared a bunch of commonalities. What's been fascinating as you've been sharing them is I'm seeing a, a flutter of chat kind of, un, I don't know if I would call it debate per se, but definitely a lot of engagement about this idea or this concept of, uh, of a product engineer. In some cases, an outright rejection, but in other cases, um, kind of this idea of, well, you know, if somebody's more senior in their career, like isn't the expectation of them if they're, if they're at the staff level that they should be cross-functional, they should have this skill set. So um, wanted to at least mention that debate. And when we get into the Q&A from the audience, we'll definitely uh, give some attention to it. So I'll mention that as well for folks who want to get their questions answered. Feel free to put them in the Q&A tab um, and upvote other people's questions. And we'll get to them in a few minutes here. So so acknowledging that, that, that that's a coming. Um, so let's say that we that you have success at hiring a team of, of product engineers and you know maybe they're maybe you have a team of all product engineers and maybe you have a team where you know they're kind of sprinkled throughout on different products or product lines 
Um, how do you engage these folks to ensure that they can be successful on the job? And how might that be, how might that be different as compared to engineers that aren't necessarily like strong on the product side, shall we say? Anyone is welcome to chime in with your perspective. I mean, I would say one thing that I've noticed, um, especially when we do hackathons, we have something called Bruxathon. Uh, we do once or twice a year, which is like our internal hackathon. Um, and in general, like the level of ideas and like both creativity and like just how much people are able to get done in, in a hackathon, it tends to be quite impressive. Um, and one of the things that I, that I hear all the time from people is like, oh, it would be great to be able to have more of that ability to do because you're kind of expressing like, your creative side much more. Uh, and that's not something like on your day-to-day -day job, um, you have some of that, but then you're also just like building and there's like multiple people with different opinions, whereas here they kind of feel that end-to-end -end ownership. I think that's something that uh, product engineers in particular um, tend to really be passionate about, like, can I have ownership more end to end and kind of try something and experiment with things and ideas that maybe otherwise you wouldn't. Whereas on the, if I take the other extreme and say more like infrastructure, it's a little bit less where like, it's less about experimenting, but it's more about like, is this going to scale reliability um, uh, and so on and so forth. So it's kind of a different set of challenges. Yeah, that's a big plus one on the hackathon. Um, I think every time we have a hackathon, uh, we, we get requests like, can, can it be a hackathon every week? Well, well, mm. well no, but, but we'll do it as much as we can. Um, I think there's like, depends on the circumstance. Like, again, if you have a roadmap that supports a lot of product discovery, a lot of like experimentation, then you, you will have a much easier time, like keeping them engaged and interested. Um, I think when sometimes it's also coupled with the engineer's like ability, um, it may or may not tie to seniority necessarily. I, I have seen, you know, early engineers that are very product focused and customer focused. Um, it's that genuine curiosity that whether or not they would go through the hoops of, you know, getting on a call with the customers and, and asking all of those questions. And so like giving them those opportunities as much as possible. Um, I like to tell my teams and, and, and engineering managers, like, make sure you have a customer success or sales buddy. Um, because, you know, you, you, you obviously get, you know, product managers giving you general guidance and, you know, what features they would like you to build. But how do you know that you're making impact, right? Because our jobs as engineers isn't just building features that is written on a spec. Our job is to create impact and hopefully, you know, bring something to the world that the customers are enjoying. So I think that is important to reiterate. And so naturally, when they get to do something that is like aligned with their values, um, and their challenge and they're growing and the opportunity is right size, they are genuinely like pretty engaged. And so, yeah, that, that's what we do. Yeah, plus one to uh, what uh, everyone said. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it's important for these engineers to have space. Uh, and uh, it's important to give them this uh, space in earlier stages of the product. Uh, they should uh, uh, really understand the product strategy and have the space to translate that to their area of ownership. Uh, and be able to make some product decisions. At the end of the day, the strength of these engineers is that they can be more independent in making product decisions, and you can trust them to make good decisions. Uh, so in that case, uh, just giving them a space and uh, uh, engaging them in uh, working with customers, with, uh, with other partners, uh, to basically define the product that they're going to build. So I hear themes of, of space, of freedom, of ownership, of, you know, things like hackathons to be able to give people the, the ability to, to contribute in that way on the product um, all make a ton of sense. I'm going to I'm going to touch on a little bit of a summary of what's going on in, in the chat in the form of a question before we go into the Q&A uh, that folks have asked. So the question is um, really about that product skill set that we're talking about. Some folks are kind of describing like that that skill set should be necessary to grow in the career ladder. So my question to you all is, um, if do you have any very senior staff, senior staff uh, principal engineers that you work with that do not have this skill set but are still fantastic? And if so, feel free to, to describe, you know, why you 
agree that it's it's not necessary or if you believe that actually it is necessary for folks to have it at the higher level yeah i think so i i mean i have seen uh staff engineers who are really good at going really deep in technical uh areas uh and i've seen a staff engineers who are more interested in really going deep and understanding a product area uh, i think in essence what we are talking about is not that different right so you want to have people who uh, really go deep in understanding a problem uh, putting themselves in users shoes and uh, thinking from their perspective and making sure that they're building solutions that are working for them uh, in many cases uh, this is uh, building for other other developers uh, on an infrastructure team or building for uh, other employees in a in a uh, team that is building internal tools uh, for product engineers this is like basically building the product uh, and I've seen like this, Actually, being uh, there, are, there have been questions about how to draw the line between PM and uh, uh, these engineers. Uh, most of these staff personas uh, are actually growing and becoming right hand of the EM. Uh, I think product engineers can grow and become the right hand of the PM. Uh, PM can actually give them an area and be more focused on the higher level. Uh, these engineers can drive it, and similar to technical side, this can go. Uh, this can be via the depth of work or breadth of work. If it's breadth of work, is they're basically owning the roadmap, figuring out uh, uh, basically next milestones of a product and all of that. And if it's depth, it's actually going really deep. So to give you one example. Um, uh, if you're familiar with Notion, we have this page layout. So you can, everything is a block and you can move blocks around and build whatever page layout that uh, you like. This page layout problem is a technical challenge, but the uh, technical challenge and user experience are so intertwined that it's actually very hard to decouple them. In this case, it's actually really hard for a PM and a designer and go put a uh, spec together hand that respect to an engineer to go and build it. Uh, that will take a lot of back and forth if you approach it that way. Alternatively, an engineer can own it end to end. Go think about the design experience of it, the pr product experience of it, and the technical solution, and just come up with a, uh, with a, with a prototype. Uh, then talk with your cross-functional partners and change it, evolve it, and all of that. But they can actually play a lead uh, in a product uh, area like that. Yeah, I would say, Gumbir, I think instead of looking at it uh, as different skills that like a product engineer might have versus someone else, it's more about how you apply those skills. Uh, so like every engineer, like if you think about like great engineers, uh, have a sense of curiosity. It doesn't matter what you focus on. Or every engineer loves to kind of like build something that gets used. It's just like who is actually the user of that. Um, some, for example, some of the folks who work on non-product stuff love the fact that they don't have, they can easily just ask someone what they want directly. Like, I can just ping someone on Slack if, if I'm building something for another engineer or for like another function, et cetera, I can just literally ping them. Uh, I can get the feedback. I can iterate super quickly. Uh, it doesn't matter if it breaks uh, as much because I, I have that kind of pace and freedom. Uh, and they would hate the fact that there's like more process and like, okay, let me set up a customer call, different customers. Are, you know, it's just like very, very different and you kind of have that freedom. Uh, and other engineers like love the fact that they have to like work with sales and hop on a customer call and, and get that uh, that feedback and, and kind of balance it out. So I would say it's a yes, uh, staff engineer or principal engineer uh, whether they're on the product side or, say, infrastructure side. And I'm using those as examples because they're more diametrically opposed for, on the spectrum, but there's uh, a lot of other examples. Um, they might have different shapes and different kind of, like, strengths, but in general, they kind of have similar skills. They just apply them in different ways that, that resonates to them. Yeah. It's just a small, small thing to add is, like, definitely... It's, it's similar skills applied in different ways. And I think also where they get their energy from, when I think about like staff or staff plus engineers that I've worked with, there's certainly folks that, you know, they're much more energized by optimizing a system that we know already has product market fit and making it very scalable or very reliable. And, you know, and, and make, Yes, that person I absolutely would put on a project like that versus maybe someone who is just much more curious about like, you know, business metrics, usage metrics, you know, it's kind of like, which, 
which tool and which chart do you spend the most time on as an engineer? Um, really seeing where they spend their energy on. Um, and, and, you know, we all want to put people where they are the most energized, right? So that's um, roughly how I would distinguish. So something that I appreciate from each of you is that there's this perspective that um, this whole your problem solving in terms of the team that you're creating for the situation that you have at hand and that it may not necessarily be cookie cutter. I mean, some folks at larger organizations may be very accustomed, you know, if it's a small project, you're going to have X engineers, you know, a PM and like a QA person or, or, or something of the like. But um, when you have these projects where like uh, Fatima, what you're talking about where the design is so intimately connected with the engineering aspects, you can benefit by having somebody that can kind of see both perspectives at the same time, which may not necessarily fit the, the cookie cutter, if you will. So with that, um, let's dive into some uh, questions from folks. So this first one's from Alex. Where do you draw the line between the PM and the product engineer? How do you maintain morale when the engineers see the product engineer doing whatever they like instead of building what the PM wants? Um, so to be able to, to answer a few questions, feel free, you know, we don't have to have all three of you participate, but if any of you have a particular example of this that you can think of or a particular reflection, feel free to share. I, I don't, I don't draw the line very much. <laughs> so I don't know that that might be controversial. Um, I, uh, whenever I, I, myself, when I was an engineer or like, you know, coaching the engineers on the team, I say you work with the product partner, you guys are joined at the hip and you're there to make impact together, however that makes sense. And I think generally that soft seat doing whatever they like, no, well, you should be doing things that make an impact and you can actually rationalize that to the team and communicate so people don't, that doesn't create a morale problem. And I think, you know, when it's not naturally happening, then, you know, perhaps the, the manager or, you know, the leader of the team should step in and, and either clarify and align the team um, or create a little bit more boundaries. But I think it's, I don't believe in drawing the line. I believe in just working together um, to what's a common goal. Hey, plus one to that, Ellen. I think this uh, these uh, personnel engineers are not going to be successful in companies where product is responsible for what and engineering is purely responsible for how. Uh, they are actually more successful where there is shared responsibility. Uh, and I don't think they're also responsible uh, successful when... Uh, there is just basically zero sum game. Uh, they are more successful in growth stages and early stages when there's just so much work to do that your PM would be very happy delegating something to you so she can or he can be focusing on something else because there's just so much work to do. Uh, and then in those cases, uh, this engineer can, as I mentioned before, I think they can really grow and become the right hand of the PM. Uh, and this is also a persona on the team, right? So uh, just like how you think about team dynamics in terms of seniority, full stack backend and uh, front end expertise, uh, you also need to think about do you have a product intuition uh, and engineers who are actually strong on that on your team. Uh, and uh, not all engineers on your team need to exhibit this uh, skill. Awesome. This next question from Vladimir, um, don't we expect all engineers working in cross-functional vertical teams on end users products to be product engineers? This is a little bit of a restating of, of stuff that we've already discussed. Um, but if, if anybody wants to, I don't know, put the nail in the coffin, if you will, on this in a pithy way, you're welcome to share. Yeah, I mean, I would say if you're working on things that are like customer facing, very cross functional, then like that is basically a product engineer. I, again, I think I wouldn't look at it as a product engineer as like, oh, you have to be full stack and be able to be like, no, like you're on a product team and you can be working on back end things for um, uh, for features directly, and like you're part of like the same uh, the same kind of team and, and context. Um, so I would say like that. I, I think if you look at it from that perspective, then yes, anybody working on features, whether it's back end, front end, mobile, et cetera, et cetera, on a team, cross functional, et cetera, et cetera, then like yeah, those people are product engineers. Um, if you want to, if you want to use that definition, that's great. This next question from uh, Ravant. How do you evaluate distinctions like this when engineers of all types may share the same career matrix that's defined at the company level? 
Yeah, so one thing that we've done is kind of like everybody's a software engineer. We don't have like titles that are like product engineering, infrastructure engineer, et cetera, et cetera. The interview loops are more specialized so that we measure the right things and kind of have the right shape. Um, but um, what we've done is at each different level, uh, we tend to bring out examples. So like if you're a product, if you're working on more product things, these are kind of like examples of how you demonstrate that particular uh, trait uh, or quality that we expect at that level. And if you're on the infrastructure side, for example, you might do that. And we kind of do a few examples to help people people calibrate. But ideally, your kind of like career ladders are generic enough in terms of like what they're measuring such that it's very impact-focused collaboration and, and all the things that, that you want to measure in your company, that it's not very specific to like you can only do that if you operate in the particular type of engineering. I, I want to respond to that. I think, uh, I, I, I think personas are very important, just like actually uh, give examples of uh, how growth can look like for every specific persona. Uh, at Notion, we actually try to make sure product engineering is reflected in our career ladder. Very specifically, uh, wherever we actually focus on technical depth, technical challenges, ambiguity, <clears throat> also specifically calling out products alongside technical. Uh, I gave you one example of like basically uh, Notion layout, I think is a very complex uh, uh, technical problem in which product and technical experience are intertwined. Other examples, permission is similar to that as well, <clears throat> is a product uh, experience. It's a very uh, complex product in which the technical side is also very complex. And I think product engineers can play a big role here. Another example is editing experience. Uh, editor is a very technical area, but also very hard one to kind of like write a spec for what a good editing experience is, right? Like you just need to have engineers who are like making uh, decisions every day. At the end of the day, engineers are closest to code and they're making decisions every day. You want them to make better product decisions on day-to-day -day basis. So we're just about, we have one more minute remaining. So a little final lightning round question, uh, maybe for each of you just to share like, you know, your brief one sentence perspective. Um, in terms of product engineering at any organization, whether it be your organization, a large organization, a small organization, um, if you think about mistakes that you observe engineering leaders make when it comes to working with a product engineer, hiring a product engineer, you know, managing out a product engineer, dealing with somebody that doesn't have the product skill set, if you can think of um, for yourself, like, what's one pitfall um, that you've seen or one piece of advice or recommendation that you might have to ensure that your organization is successful as it relates to product engineers and product engineering. So I kept that purposely open and ambiguous uh, for each of you. So feel free to chime in uh, with the you know, brief, brief version of, of your thoughts on that um, yeah, one by one. I could go first because I have something top of mind. <laughs> uh, I think it's very important uh, to uh, have clear decision-making processes. Uh, by involving engineers, by creating shared responsibilities, you are uh, fostering collaboration. And uh, the other side of fostering collaboration is making sure you have clear decision-making processes so you can still make progress. Um, I would say that... Um, I kind of touch on it a little bit, right? Um, there are certain things sometimes we pattern match on what we consider to be a really effective product engineers, but you do want to make sure your organization culture, your roadmap supports um, that sort of like persona. Like if they are really looking to like iterate really quickly and your roadmap is pretty static, you're just going to have retention problem. Um, and then another aspect of it is like, assuming you do have that alignment with the personalities on the team and you have that good team, making sure that as you know, your company evolve, strategy might change, market condition might change, continuously be transparent as much as possible to inform them of those changes. Um, Cause one of the, one of the big just like like quickest way to kill creativity and, and motivation is just not letting them know and they kind of put in a lot of effort into something that is actually misaligned with a new direction. So yeah, like being transparent and keeping them up to date on those would be really important. For me, I would say keep like when you're early stage, you basically have a very high bar and you want engineers who are like independent and creative and they don't need a PM and they don't need a designer and they don't need like 
they can just kind of do all the different things. Um, and over time, as the company starts hiring different roles, um, you naturally start lowering that bar. And I would say probably um, try to to not change that uh, because I think it's really valuable. Even if um, you end up having all these other more specialized functions and roles, it's really, really valuable to have engineers who could fill in those gaps because you never know when like you're on a team and something happens and it doesn't have a designer for whatever reason. And now you don't want to feel like you're blocked or you don't have a PM or, um, and even if you have those things, I think it creates the collaboration and that kind of debate that makes the product better. Um, and so don't, don't give that up as you continue scaling. Awesome words of wisdom from all three of you. I want to thank each of you so much for taking the time to share your wisdom with everybody. So Fatima, Ellen, Kaz, thank you again and uh, hope to see you again soon. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Thanks, it was a pleasure. Thanks for having us.